What's up you guys? Okay, um, today I am making a video on a lift that I've posted many times to my social media, but I've never actually explained it. Um, um, so today, uh, just so you know, the videos that I post to uh, everything, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, those are not videos, I don't select the content according to what I think is going to get the most views or follows. I use social media as my digital training wall for my cell phone. So like, I mean it's nice, I really appreciate all of you that watch and that comment and I greatly appreciate you all, but um, I'm not doing this necessarily for that one. I started this in 2020 before I was locked down and I, like everyone else, I was just stuck at home, so I started posting some workouts to social media, and then I don't know, this happened. So, um, thank you for being here, but I am not, whatever I post is what I organically choose as my own personal workout for that day. And today, it's been a while since I've worked my neck and my jaw, so today is when I'm doing that. By no means do I recommend this to you or anyone. This is relevant. What I'm doing here is relevant to my needs, my purposes. I usually describe it as um, this exercise in particular is based on my past experience in life and my future expectations. This has um, something to do with the combat or the martial arts, I should say. And um, I have found that um, developing this ability is extremely helpful across the board, even if you're not into fighting or martial arts. And I no longer fight at all. At my age, that's not a good thing for me to do. I'm kind of just laying back on that. But I still train as if I was. Because if I can maintain the attributes of fighting and the conditioning that's required, then in general, I'm prepared for everything that falls underneath that. I can play with my kids. I can help my neighbors move something if there's an emergency. I can also hopefully help out of that and be mentally and physically able to do so. But once again, this is not made as an instructional, nor tutorial, nor, and it certainly is not a recommendation, the risk involved in doing this to your teeth, your jaw, your neck, your whole body should be pretty apparent once we get started. But um, I'm going to show how I do this because um, I know that some of you are curious, so I'm going to provide the information. I, once again, I'm very grateful that all of you have followed me this far. And, um, so I believe that I, it's now time for me to start sharing what I actually do and what my workouts actually look out look like. Uh, by the way, this is a totally, all of these videos are just going to be one take, one camera angle, unedited. So just be ready with your fast forward. Um, switch because certain parts of this will be grabbing stuff. But I'll try to talk to you and keep things moving as we go along here. I'm not used to doing that, so I'm, I'm going to be a little awkward because I'm actually kind of shy. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's, uh, let's start with the towel. This is just a blue surgical towel, all right? Um, I make sure that I pull it tight on both sides and I focus on making sure that the edges remain even as I roll the towel. So I constantly keep taking out the slack in the towel. I don't want one edge to creep out farther than the other, so I end up with like a comb here and a little depression here, which I'm kind of getting, but you just want to be aware of, of taking the slack out of your towel first. Oops. Um, let me focus back here. All right, and I'm just taking, so pulling outwards, this is, once again, a blue surgical towel, towel, it's nothing special, okay? Once I've got that, I'm now gonna loop, I'm gonna use a kettlebell. You might have seen me do this with barbells and some and other implements, um, but uh, the kettlebell is usually a pretty uh, safe and a reasonable um, means of kind of, of, of securing a weight to the towel, and because if you have a selection of them, you can scale the uh, weight kind of in small increments, it's really a good thing to start with. Uh, 
I'm discussing. Well, regardless of, of what I'm using, I normally, I normally, uh, sorry, I normally um, start with kettlebells, even if I end up with a sandbag or a barbell. Um, by the way, once again, uh, if you choose to do something else, just be aware that um, I can't vouch for the risk involved in that. So today we're using kettlebells. This is a 10 pounder. And uh, I do this in two ways. I have a wide stance as well, as well as a narrow stance. Today, I'm gonna go with a wide stance. It's the safer alternative to start with. Even if I'm gonna go narrow stance later on, the wide stance allows me to get that nice leg drive because this, for me, the safety and the integrity of my neck is largely dependent on me not actually pulling with my neck, but bracing my neck, my traps, and my scapular retractors with my lats very strongly in this position. And then once that platform is well established and very rigid, then I elevate that platform with my legs, okay? This is a 10 pound kettlebell. If you're new to this, and if you decide at your own risk to try doing this or any type of holding a weight with your teeth or your jaw, um, please start with a light weight. Okay? That only makes sense. Um, and here's what's important. I know there is definite risk of, uh, to the teeth, of literally having them break off in your mouth. And, um, yeah. By the way, I have limited meat mobility, so this is a lot kind of as low as I can get here. So, while I talk to you, I'm, I gotta spend time on this, so if you if you're bored, I'm sorry, but um, when I take when I take this uh, towel and I, I bite on it, I place it in my mouth so that each of these symmetrically tight rolls of towel are way back in the molars. Your molars are like thick blocks that are aligned this way. Your front teeth are like picket fence, you know, just boards aligned this way. We never want to ever use the front teeth to bite and pull or hold anything for obvious reasons. It would be like taking a picket fence and pulling and just leaning back on it. They would just come out. But these boulders back here, they are more cubical and they have, I, I believe, four roots instead of just two, like the front teeth. And they are aligned with the pull or the force direction involved in this lift. Okay, I've been doing this a long time um, and I have yet to have problems. Who knows, now that I'm videotaping, I might have one today. Won't that be fun to watch? But, Otherwise, um, just understand when I put the towel in, it's like this. Uh -huh. Pardon me, this might look a little obscene, but just deal with it out. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. Front teeth are totally clear, fully on the molars. And then when I actually apply, when I start lifting the weight, I first have to apply a bite that through this towel fuses my jaw and my skull into one fist. That's why I call my head and my neck my third fist. Because that's, you know, it, that's the degree to which I am fusing. Just like you don't want to punch an object with your hands slack and all the bones able to jiggle around and break and go fly off in different directions. Neither do you want your head and your neck and your jaw to be segmented and loosey-goosey so when you start lifting up heavier weights, things start to shift. That's when teeth break, jaw, and all bad things happen. So I establish a redundantly strong bite. The bite should always be, be able to accommodate more than I'm actually lifting. If you start feeling your jaw, your neck, anything creaking, um, in the beginning, when you first start doing that, that could be normal, but I'm going to go as far as saying anything creaking is not good, especially your teeth, okay? So just keep that in mind. Once again, I do not recommend that you guys do this, but I am showing you how I do it, 
Okay, I'm gonna say that a lot because I don't want you to, to do anything crazy and hurt yourself, you know, from, from a YouTube video. That'd be ridiculous. Okay, so, <laughs> by the way, in case you guys think I'm more than I really am, and you shouldn't, I'm just a guy. I got, my knees are a little messed up, so I also like to start movements like this from the wide stance because it just kind of, you know, it just helps me to warm them up. Like, you know, sissy squats and sitting in a kneeling position is very difficult for me now. So I'm hoping that uh, I'll be doing some work with a, a group called uh, Merrick Health. I've mentioned that. This is not an ad for them, but I think you guys are going to be very interested to see what I'll be doing with them in the coming months because um, we're going to try and fix a lot of my issues here. But that's something else. Okay, so here's what. We got a nicely rolled towel. Goes without saying, hopefully a clean one. All right, now, when you, when I first start, so I'm gonna put this in uh, first person, I, I, the weight I'm using should be easy for me to just hold. And now if you need to put it on a towel, on a table or a little something, I do recommend doing that because trying to get the, the towel symmetrically seated in your jaw is a little tricky. Now I'm just gonna kind of, uh huh, uh huh. All right, once I'm done, no front two. All right, hands here. Climb the side out to the front. Okay, um, in case you're wondering about warm-ups, I don't, my warm-up is just a lighter, graduated version of whatever exercise I'm gonna do. I don't, and I'm not telling you this is what you should do, this is just what works for me. I don't do cardio, I don't foam roll, I don't even stretch. I'll use something like a wide stance or a sumo squat to warm this up. And then I'm gonna progress the weight now. So this is 10 pounds. And I have a 20 pound kettlebell. Once again, loop this through. I wanna make sure I set this deep into my molars with no, no part of this is being supported on the front teeth at all. It's all in the back, the very back teeth. All right, from here. And I'm not dumbing this down for you. I only do, no matter what it is I'm doing, deadlifts, curls, whatever, I only do a few reps because I have a lot of different ways here, so um, I don't want to waste a lot of time and energy on 10 reps warm-up sets. Um, I'd rather just activate my jaw and my neck and whatever musculature I'm using and then progress to another weight for just a few really well-connected, controlled, smooth repetitions. All right, 30 pounds. Turn the bell this way. Another thing is you do not, regardless of what you're using, when I say you, I'm not suggesting you do this, once again, but make sure that when you lift it off the ground or when you are in motion with it, it is not twisting, swinging, or tilting. For obvious reasons, that will not be good for your performance or your safety. Okay. So, uh -huh. Talking 
to anybody during my workouts. I don't train with other people. I only train about myself. So I'm kind of a lonely guy. But anyway, um, another thing, when I'm, as you, the arm position, we, I liked, I found that as I go down, if I do this wingsuit position with my arms, I don't know if that's proper, but what I'm actually doing is I'm trying to extend my arms backwards, flaring my lats. So, sorry, pardon me, but I'm doing this, I'm engaging my lats because that gives me tremendous strength and integrity through the, the middle of the shoulders all the way up into the back of my head. Okay? All right. 44 pounds. Another thing I talked to you about not letting the weight swing, and then I picked it up, and of course it swung. I was, I'm a little bit uh, excited to have you here with me today. So I'm going to slow down. I'm going to show you how I make sure that uh, kettlebell does not swing when I start actually using it. And all I'm going to do is just slowly lift it. It will usually equalize itself. And at that point, when it's Stop moving, I can stop it with my hands, and then I'm gonna bring it off the floor. Okay, so. When you're warming up, or when I warm up with anything I'm doing on the warm-up sets, I should always feel like I can do a lot more than I did. I can do more of those, but once again, my jaw endurance and my neck endurance is different from the, what's below that. So I gauge the amount of time and energy I put into any given warm-up weight according to the, what I'll call the smallest link in the chain. I don't like to call it the weakest link because that's just is not a good mindset. Okay, so let's uh, bring out a 24 kilo or 53 pound kettlebell. So I gotta make sure that I'm actually recording because so many times I do this, I actually forget to crush the record. And it's so disappointing that all my good intentions were not available to share. Okay, so once again, I was double checking the towel. And um, all right. then I'll go over how, to, how I set my neck and everything. So now as the kettlebell's getting a little taller, it's a little easier for me to get down to it. So before I lift, anything in this fashion, I need to be able to easily get down to it. If my back is flexed in any way, that is a no-go. Do not, do not try to ever do anything like this from a flexed back. A lot of, okay, um, here's one. A lot of this has to do with jujitsu and being in somebody's guard or being pulled into somebody's guard either by the back of your neck or your lapel. By the way, I'm not a jiu-jitsu instructor. I am like a really bad white belt, okay? But I love jiu-jitsu because it shows me everywhere I am weak and deficient and then I use those lessons and I then program that into what I do. Everything you see me do on social media has to do in some way with getting better at a martial or combat art and being more tolerant and resilient to it. That's it. I don't care about muscles. I don't care about being ripped. If that, if what I do, if I look, whatever I look like, it's a byproduct of training for combat. That's why I really am a big fan of people trying to, because a, a lot of times we don't have an intention behind what we're doing with our strength training, we just, these, these movements just become kind of a road to means to an end. And uh, if you have something deep inside you that drives you to do what you're doing, it goes without saying that 
the rewards from that will be much, much higher. They will match your intention and your effort. So that being said, okay, 53 pounds. Once, I have, once I'm here, I'm gonna set, make sure that my neck, my back, everything is set in a not overextended position, but extended. I am, I am locked into a rigid platform that my legs will now drive. All right, um, I'll talk about breathing in a moment, but let's do this. So. No problem. Yeah. No problem, breathe. Yeah. Um, no, I'll figure it out here. The breathing, once I've got the, the, the towel locked up in my mouth, I take a deep inhalation into my belly through my nose. And then I pressurize that like a bubble that I'm gonna, like a pneumatic cushion that I'm gonna push against. It also allows me to use the oxygen that I've just stored to get me to the top without rushing or panicking. At the top, I take one more breath in through my nose. I pressurize it again, lock it in, use the integrity of that breath to lower the belt. Okay, so I'll show you that. So actually, um, I'll invite you to look for that on this next repetition, with a, what is that, 32 kilo or a 70 pound kettlebell. So again, double checking the wrap. This one's getting a little loose. Always double check, make sure that that wrap is nice and tight. And I hope you saw as I'm going along here that I actually allow the kettlebell to equalize with the pull of gravity so it's not swinging. And then I can set my position and then push out of the thighs as I drive through the arches of my feet. And I never come up to here. This is obviously not a good idea because if you try to walk out, this is not powerlifting. We don't care about deadlift standards on this. Whatever angle, the highest position I can go while not losing my neck position by going higher, that's as high as I need to go. Okay, so uh, usually as the weight gets heavier, my, the degree to which I'm able to stand up with it might change. And that's, that's a good thing. It keeps things safe and it's not necessarily not necessary to go higher. So now I'm just trying to guess where the equilibrium point is to gravity. I'm sure you physics guys uh, know a better way of seeing that, but um, that's not me. Okay, all right, so uh -huh. redundantly strong bite. This is a 70 pound kettlebell. I'm biting enough to lift a 100 pound kettlebell. And if I'm lucky today, I might actually get one of those off, off the floor. Okay, hold on. Another, another point, I like to use my breathing as my governor switch to how much I should be lifting. If the breathing cycle that I just described, I am not able to take that second breath at the top, that is an indicator to me that I might be approaching the heaviest weights for that day and time in my physiological makeup, okay? So, and that goes for everything I do. If when I'm running, if my breathing starts getting labored, I can no longer kind of control it through my nose and it's just huffing and puffing. Unless I'm sprinting or doing anaerobic field work plyometrics, um, my breathing cadence is always going to determine the degree to which I apply myself and when I stop. All right. So, by the way, that was a bad mechanic, so don't do that. All right. Okay, now, unfortunately, I don't have anything between, um, right there. 
a 70 pound and an 88 pound kettlebell. So this is kind of a bigger jump that I would recommend. Um, but I'm gonna lean back on my uh, experience with this. Once again, I recommend that number one, I don't recommend anything above 20 pounds. If you're absolutely new to this and you do decide on your own uh, to do this, the weights should feel redundantly, stupidly light. You should feel like you you should feel like a wimp when you first start doing this. Because even if they don't come in heavy while you're doing this, because you're all excited and whatever, the neck muscles are they're, they're they are indeed they're small. They're extremely strong, but if they're not used to this, they do not need a lot of this in the first several, I would say, months of your training this way, should you decide to do so. Okay, 88 pounds, you're gonna see a little difference in how this, this is starting to kind of get a little heavy for me. And once again, I do not recommend these weights at all to anybody. I don't care how strong your job neck are. If I, don't, if I can't work with you directly, then I just, I, I just want you to stay safe and, and healthy and happy. All right, here we go. So molars, real important. Also, make sure that one is not one side of the towel is not jammed farther into the molars than the other side. That is no good. Varies everything symmetrical. Symmetrical tightness of the roll. Symmetrical edges. Symmetrical seating deep into the the molars. Okay, everything is symmetrical. You must be obsessed with that when you're doing this. All right. there's a distinct pause at the top. That is another verification to myself and my system that the weight I'm using is still within the boundaries of what I can safely operate with, okay? I need to be able, and that goes with all the lifts I do. I need to be able to hold the top, whether it's an overhead press, whatever. I need to be able to hold that and not be in a rush to go back down and then the lowering should look very smooth, very controlled. There should be no crash landings, especially on this. Okay, so let's use better mechanics slightly. So I'll put my towel on the floor. Okay. Mm. When I was being certified for kettlebell back in, what was that, 2008? This was called the Beast. It's a 48 kilogram, 106 pound kettlebell. Uh, back in the day, this was as big as they got that you could get. Um, if, you, if you weren't rushing, this is about as big as you could get. Um, it's plenty big for me. Okay. So we're going to. 106 pounds. Once again, this kind of weight. Um, I have been doing this a long time, for many years. I haven't spent, and just once again, I have not spent that much time training martial arts, but I've gotten beaten enough and I've been shown enough of the gaps in my conditioning from martial arts for that to be the inspiration for everything I do, okay? So, this is, seems like a heavy weight, and it is, but when I compare just the sheer, even a small guy, a smaller guy, I've been crushed in jiu-jitsu and wrestling and you name it, by guys that were literally 130 pounds. And think of an intelligent human being who we call small at 130 pounds, but they know how to just whip ass an inanimate 106 pound ball, by comparison, is, I won't say nothing, but compared, that's why I say my, my past experience and my future expectation. I've experienced huge guys, guys way bigger than me, 
trying to can open my head and um, triangle choking, you name it. And yeah, now I might not have had the technique to counter that necessarily. I'm trying to go there. Um, but at the same time, I was oftentimes able to cry out of certain positions, just, you know, that maybe I shouldn't have. I'm not saying that's a good thing either, but um, I know that if, uh, yeah, there's, there's always going to be guys better than you, no matter how good you are. And that's why I think uh, I like to train this kind of a thing. Just so, not so I can whip anyone's ass. I'm really not into doing that. I'm actually a very nice guy. But um, I don't want my ass whipped either. I just want to be able to, 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 to get away. Really, I mean, that's why I practice sprinting a lot too. Because that is that is a martial art as well. It's, if you're not doing that, you should be. If you need one reason to sprint, consider running fast away from uh, another person or a group of people. That is a martial art that needs to be cultivated by all people, regardless of gender, age, culture. You're never immune to being attacked. So that's why I do what I do. Okay. Okay. Another thing, if it's hard for you to lift with your hands, that's another indicator that it might not be a good idea to lift it with your teeth. Ah, I don't know. You know, I was just talking about bringing it up, holding. That went pretty well. But you notice on the landing, I pressurized a lot. You know, like when you do a heavy deadlift, you do that woo thing. Your jaw, when you bite down hard on something, that is such a primal, visceral thing to do. Um, it literally puts you in survival mode. And you know how guys sniff like um, smelling salts or whatever these things are they sniff now to get to prime their nervous system? I don't like those because they hurt me. I'm tender that way. But biting things as I lift, I'm also going to be doing some stuff on some bite or some mouthpieces that um, were sent to me. And I'll be reviewing those soon as well. They, you just bite them as you do normal things. But when I bite on this, it activates this complex, this fist, all the way down to my, through my, all the way to my heels, okay? And I also believe for myself that lifting or neck lifts, where I'm attaching myself to the weight by my jaw is a much safer and sound and more sensible thing to do than using a head harness. I also do use head harnesses, but I don't use them a lot because the times where I've almost injured myself and my neck specifically was usually uh, with the use of head harnesses. Now, if you're currently using head harnesses, I guarantee you are better than I am. So please, I am not telling people to not use head, head harnesses, especially when you're starting with this. I, I recommend you start with a head harness first with very light weights because you can do stuff like this that you can't really do with this. So, but I, for me, when I'm trying to lift the heaviest weights for my neck, if my jaw is not involved in that, then I'm actually, I feel I'm at higher risk. To me, it's sort of like trying to do a maximum bicep curl with the barbell taped to your wrist rather than in your grip. Because when you grab things, everything above that, even all the way down to your feet, activates with your grip. Your jaw is even has a stronger effect than that. So that is why I'm really into the jaw and the neck. Because just as an activation device for everything physical and mental, um, to me the jaw is the way there. Okay, so I'm I think 106 is enough, and I also, you know, I like to keep my workout short. I like to just see how far I can get in 20 to 30 minutes. With all this talking, I don't know where I am on the time, because I don't have a timer here. 
there. So I'll look at it. I'm going to do one more time at 106. Hopefully my vascular system, my orthostatic pressure has equalized a little better. And let's, let's see if I can uh, get a slightly better lift, especially on the way down. Thanks so much for watching. 